Maybe you formatted it incorrectly. Oh, Ever considered that? Let it fly. Accusations. We're good at accusations in this room. It's primarily David throwing the accusations. But I look like I'm in a closet. <laughs> You've been in the closet not, your whole life. You not going to go there. Not going to go there. <laughs> Hopefully you don't come out on the show. I'm just <laughs> you did walk full frontal right into that. <laughs> I can't say that I've ever seen you blush. But the good news is you no longer look like you have jaundice. How, how do you tell? How, yeah. How, how are you going to tell that I blushed? It looks like I have jaundice. Well, you turn more orange than, than red. So... <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Clint White, buddy, how you doing? Lucas, I'm good. Thanks for asking. Absolutely, sir. So you taught a class today at Vision, and and I guess we should make uh, sure that the listeners know who you are. We've been talking and chatting online for years now. Yeah. Why don't you introduce yourself? Well, yeah. My name is Clint White. I'm the owner and founder of CWI, Coaching with Integrity, and I am an industry coach, consultant, trainer, guru, sometimes resident moron and uh what i what i do is i strive to change the industry yeah. uh, i actually coined that phrase before i knew you'd coined that phrase right uh i've been in the industry about 30 years okay and uh, i've been a technician i've uh, been a service advisor i've managed multiple shops i've had my foot in just about every mud right. puddle there is and i'm very passionate about people yeah i love people and i want to see this industry be better yeah. So tell me this. How did you how did you get to the coaching role? Where where did that come from in this whole process? How did you go from from being in the field to working on the field? Yeah, I was and you I was, want to make sure you're like Yeah, right I was a, the, a, afforded the opportunity to uh, work with a, a couple of service advisors that uh, needed some guidance and some wisdom. Okay. And uh, was, uh, somebody opened the door for me for that. And right. And I was uh, blessed to continue forward and have, have built built the business from that. Yeah. That's pretty awesome, man. That's pretty awesome. Um, and so today you taught a class. Tell us a little bit about what that class was. Yeah, so I taught on successful scheduling and workflow management and really broke down a process uh, by which shop owners, service advisors, and technicians come together. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I see when I do on sites with shops is there is a significant amount of tension mm-hmm. and there is a grotesque amount of miscommunication. Yeah. And nobody knows what's going on in front of the house versus back of the house. And I found that much of it is rooted in uh, poorly designed software. And I, I hate to say that. It is what yeah. it is. Where we're trying to work with this, uh, this great technology, and it's convoluted, it's confusing, it's, it segregates uh, this board with that board, with this schedule, with that appointment book. With yeah. it's, it's nuts. And so I, I really teach something I, I consider to be, I don't know, third grade technology. Okay. It's not hard. Right. Put it all on one page and make sure everybody knows what's going on and empower your technicians to be able to manage their workflow, empower your advisors uh, yeah. in the same manner. So that's uh, that's really kind of the, the nutshell what I taught. That's a that's an interesting concept. And the reason I say that is because we see so many shops like really struggle with scheduling. Oh, yeah. And, and we have a lot of, of talks and. I went through that a little while with my shop, right? It's mm-hmm. like trying to find that balance, especially when we were in three bays yeah. and we were pushing 130,000 a month. And mm-hmm. one of our bays is only seven foot tall, right? Wow. And so it was, it was a constant push to make sure we had the right vehicle in the right bay at the mm-hmm. right time and make sure we had capacity for it. And I always found myself either too far in one direction or too far in the other direction. Mm-hmm. I either didn't have enough work or I had too much work. Yeah. And, you know, I know right now we're talking about shops being slower than they were and, and whatnot, yeah. but it, it's for me, you know, I talked to Rick White and, and Rick gave me the parking lot scheduling. Mm-hmm. And that's really what I kind of developed in my shop and built our systems around that mm-hmm. for the simple fact that, like, let's really look at our hours per RO and let's make sure we're scheduling with a little bit of common sense here. Yeah. Because what I was doing before was just like as many cars as I could get as I thought I could fit through. Yeah. And it, it feels really busy today, so I'm going to schedule less. Yep. And the next day, I feel really, really slow, so I'm going to schedule more. Mm-hmm. And it just never, like I was creating these waves in the shop. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's that's when you schedule uh, by the seat of your pants. Right? Yeah. And uh, and you're wearing chaps, so yeah. it's a little breezy, son. <laughs> well, you know, work. what what sucks about it is is that there's so many shops and, and service advisors, shop owners, technicians, everybody going through this right now, where when you talk to them, they're like, well, I got to have all those cars. I need all those cars. Mm-hmm. Well, the problem is, is they're driving their car count so high yeah. that everybody feels overworked and overwhelmed. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 
and they're not focusing on ARO. Like in my shop, I only schedule three cars a day per tech. Mm-hmm. And and you say that to a shop owner, and they're like, oh, I could never do that. Well, sure you can if you got fifteen hundred dollars a ticket. Yeah, yeah, it's seventy two percent GP. Absolutely, that's more why, than why enough. couldn't you? More and, than enough. You know, one of the one of the guys that I referred over to Cecil a while back. His name's Jeremy, and he he owns a shop near me. Mm-hmm. And uh, when we first started talking, Jeremy says, "You know, I I don't think I want to do this anymore. This really sucks. Mm-hmm. This is hard." And so I'm like, "Well, what's your ARO?" And he's like, oh, "It's like one hundred and thirty five dollars." I'm like, whoa, hold on now. How about (laughs) a hot dog stand, son? Right? And so we're talking (laughs) and we're going back and forth. And I'm like, well, what's your effective labor rate? He's like, it's 48.50. And I said, hold up. How many cars are you taking? And they were taking like 10 or 15 cars a day with three tags. And he's like, well, they all have to go today. So I can't tell them about anything else or I'm going to overload the shop. Bingo. And I'm like, Hang on just a minute. Yeah. Like let let's think this through. And and the problem is is that as us being in the industry, mm-hmm. we see the problem with that. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. But a lot of the people who are running shops have never worked in a shop or been responsible for scheduling a shop in an efficient and a productive yeah. way, and they just don't know. They don't get it. They they can't see the forest because of the trees, right? Yeah. So I, I teach what I call a dualistic shop mindset. Okay. So we've got the yin and the yang. Uh, and, and I love that this, I gave this to the, the entire uh, um, audience today is if you're a single shop owner, but you but you secretly desire to be an MSO, mm-hmm. I want to have two. Right. I said, I just gave you two. Your first shop is, is your investigative facility. Yep. That investigative facility, we schedule uh, you know three, three cars a day per technician for investigative. So we're going to yep. do a diagnosis and inspection. Every car gets an inspection. No excuses. Fight yeah. me. Uh, and then we're going to do that two to three times per, per technician. And then once all of the information that we've acquired from there with the inspection or with the diagnosis is turned into the advisor so they can begin the process of estimating sourcing parts and selling, what we do is we allow him to retool once. And he changes from a brain surgeon working at high level, right? Yeah. Working working on the, the multi-network systems. And he, and he shuts that part of his brain off and he turns into a mechanical specialist and he yeah. turns wrenches. Yeah. And we leave him alone. And and I, I schedule what he's doing in the shop. You see, we're real good about being a dentist. We have an appointment book. And I've yeah. got six appointments today. But what about all the stuff that we've been waiting for parts for? And and it's a six-hour job. And, and we, we could schedule that. But no, we just, again, seat of our pants yeah. on the production side. So you've got an investigative facility and a pro- production facility. And they work harmoniously under one roof. But they don't intermingle. Yeah. That model right there I have found to be ridiculously successful. It keeps technicians productive. Yeah. It, it allows the advisors to promise uh, or to sell with uh, with great confidence. Yeah. And at the end of the day, who matters the most are our guests. Yeah. And and they they receive an experience that is unlike any other shop. Well, that's a really important point. How many shops and how many how many consumers mm-hmm. do you hear from? that are pissed off that they've taken their car to a shop and it was a week later before they got it back. And in some cases that's reasonable, right? I'm not saying it's not reasonable. It's just that the number of people that we talk to and, and you know, I talk all the time to, to local consumers around me Sure. and they're like, well, they told me it'd be two weeks before they could look at it. Mm -hmm. And then they said that, well, uh, two weeks before they can look at it. And then they look at it and they can't tell me when they're going to fix it. They just told me what was wrong with it and that they ordered the parts. Right. Yeah. And, you know, in my shop, the way that we do it is, is we order the parts and we put that vehicle back on the schedule for the day that the parts are supposed to come in. Not mm-hmm. that day, but the following day. Yep. So we can say, hey, these are the right parts. We've got everything we need. We can call the client and inform the client and talk about kind of what that process looks like. Sure. Um, and, you know, I, I think that we've got in, a, in our heads or a mindset in this industry that the consumer wants the car back really quickly. They have this idea of, of I need it today, mm-hmm. and some consumers definitely need that, but it's our job to set that expectation with the consumer. Yeah. It's our job of saying we can or we cannot do this. Yep. This is what this looks like. This is how long it should take. Yeah. You know, and I think that we miss that all too often. Yeah. I, 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 told, the, I told the audience this morning, I said, I've been doing this a long time. I remember the days when I could order parts for a vehicle from three different vendors and at the same time, yeah. and there was a race. And uh, whoever got there first, I, I, I would keep those. And the other two, I would just say, well, return, never mind, order canceled. And that's a terrible way to do business. And I tell people, don't, don't yeah. do that to your vendors. But it harkens back to a time when same-day service was available. 
Yeah. Cars were less complicated. Parts were available in mass, and it was really easy to do that. And and the, the the thing that I stand on is that our world has changed. Get over it. It's okay. Yeah. Speed of service is not actually what we hang our hat on anymore. You can't because there's so many factors involved. Where you're understaffed. I got a parts chain issue. We don't, we don't do that. Now, do we delay? Do we go, well, we'll get around to it? No, you don't do that either. You've got to right. manage the work that you sell. I get that. But COVID has, has basically normalized the wait for us. Yeah. We're, we're four years out. And the wait for this product or this part or this service anywhere in America, yep, it's just the way it is. So what I really push my shops towards is have an immediacy in acknowledging mm -hmm. and, if possible, answers. And from there, we have a very, very clear-cut methodology on when it will be done. And so I'm going to do my very best to bring you on on a day when I have a technician who has a block in his schedule to do an hour and a half worth of tests and procedures. Yeah. I will get you answers. I will be able to get you a number. And then I can I can tell you the availability of the parts. And my shop may not be available until Thursday next week. Yeah. I can have parts tomorrow. That doesn't matter I will be able to put it on my production schedule next week. Have you done by say Friday, Monday? And it's it's a very clear cut way to operate where there's 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 no confusion. Yeah. And customers are okay with that. Where we go wrong is I can't look at it for two weeks. That's yeah, you're not gonna, gonna lose work. that client. That's not gonna work for me. He's gonna yeah. go down the road. But what I can do is I will give you immediate attention. Uh, a lot of shops will do like a 15 minute free no wrench, right? Just yeah. an acknowledgement of, hey, there's a there's a code. Let's pop the hood. Let's see if there's anything obvious and and honor that. We have to honor our guests. Yeah. And then from there, I would say the overwhelming majority can conform to today's reality that I'm not going to have it fixed tomorrow. Right. Well, it, you know, how many shops are we seeing? And and they post in the group all too often. Um, with this kind of yes mentality, mm -hmm. right? And it's it's say yes, <clears throat> yep. get them in the door, and then we'll figure it out, Yep. right? And yep. That, I don't think that's fair to the client. No, it's it's not. Let me, let me ask you something. Let's just say that uh, you've got, what's your favorite restaurant, by the way? Mm, uh, Water's Edge in, in Pennsylvania, probably. Yeah. It's probably yeah. close to the best. Seafood, right? Uh, no, 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 no. It's a, uh, what would you call that? I don't know. Food. Uh, it's a well there we are it's a culinary a, expert guys yeah it's a it's a fairly nice kind of high-end okay so we're american we're talking pinkies out kind of a nice place yeah, right yeah, okay for sure so uh, imagine you called and you said hey do you have room and they answered with is now a good time come on down and you did and you got there and there was just this crowd yes. and you look in the restaurant and every seat is full and they said yeah come on in and they walked you to a table that was full of people and they said excuse me sir uh, uh this this is Lucas Underwood he's going to actually sit on your lap are you okay can you scoot back a little bit and we're sitting people on people's yeah. laps yeah that gets really awkward it does yeah, no, Lucas do. would enjoy that he might and that again <laughs> let's just leave that one off the record uh, but that's what we do with, yes, with the come on down is. mentality is you you stress you stress your 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 team yeah and you, here's a, here's a, one of the things that I, I just it blows my mind and I, I was a technician for years mm -hmm. is hey we got someone out here I need you to check this I need you to do this real quick and I'm mid stroke in a timing chain job yeah and you want me to retool clean up come out start thinking high level yeah right and it, why do we have so many misdiagnoses? Right. Yeah. Why Draw, uh, parts left loose? Why do I have technicians quitting because there there's the chaos in the shop? Yeah. Because we don't know how to schedule. No, we just don't. Well, I hey, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I I've been in a class where that concept was being taught, right? Mm -hmm. And they were telling this story about a uh, service advisor and the owner of the shop had come into the shop mm -hmm. and they were teaching the class and they said. They came into the shop and they saw that a client had walked in. It's four o'clock in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And the service advisor says, I'm sorry, sir, I can't get you in for an oil change today, but I'm happy to make you an appointment. Mm -hmm. This uh, this owner terminated the service advisor. Yep, I've seen him. Went outside, told the man, gave him a coupon and said, hey, if you ever want your oil changed, you come back. I'll pay for it. I'll cover it. I'm really sorry. We'll get you in right now. Yeah. Now, the service advisor's point was, mm -hmm. is the shop is full. And we're we're working on getting the work that's in the shop out. Yeah, we have a full schedule tomorrow. How how can I how can I fit this person in at four o'clock in the afternoon? And she says, "Well, you don't worry about it. You get them in. You find one thing wrong with the car and get them to leave it." Okay. And that 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 it's, doesn't feel very nice to me. <laughs> I don't think that I don't think that makes Jesus happy. Yeah, is that fair? Yeah, you say that. Yeah. 
Yeah. So uh, what that points towards is a, is a lack of understanding in, in what you do for a living. Yeah. That's a transactional mindset. And it, and it says that at, at any cost, I will at least get you in the shop. So back to the restaurant analogy. As that restaurant owner, knowing that my staff is limited, my seats are limited, there's only so much food in the kitchen, and I only have so many cooks. I want you to come to my restaurant that I've poured my heart and soul into and have the most amazing meal, the most attentive experience, right? Your, your server is going to be there at your beck and call, listen intently to your conversations, cater to your needs, and really just wow you, blow your mind. That's what I want for you. If I can't deliver that, now I have I have this scale. I have to put on one side, I tell you that I don't have room. Or on the other side, I give you this half-assed service. Yeah. It ain't going to be great, but at least I got you in. I would rather you not be able to get in today, Yeah, maybe go somewhere else and eat Taco Bell. But when you do come back, which you will, I can wow you. We we reduce ourselves to a transactional business when we do that. Yeah, it's not fair to the client. And I tell you what, if that's the way you run business, you might think about opening a hot dog stand. Yeah, I'm 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 not in disagreement. And I, <laughs> you know, I, I replied to someone asking about a, a quote for an article this morning, and I, we were talking a little bit about the technician shortage, mm -hmm. and I said I, I don't think that we have a technician shortage. I think we have a skilled trade shortage oh, 100%. A, as a whole, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. I don't think it is just a North America thing. I think it's a global thing. Yeah. And I think that the problem's much bigger than what, what a bunch of technicians and shop owners sitting around a table can solve. But I will say this, that while we have a shortage of folks coming in, mm -hmm. we also have got to maintain the folks we have now. And we have to make sure we have the culture and the environment that keeps them and, and is fair to them. Yeah. And if we build systems... It doesn't matter how much money you pay somebody if work is miserable, right? And and yeah. the, the I made a TikTok the other day talking about this, and I was talking about look at Chick Fil A and look at McDonald's, mm -hmm. right? Everybody says, well, well, I'll just go work fast food. You can make just as much money working fast food. Okay, great. Well, let's think about this for a minute. If it's just about money, you look at McDonald's. Mm -hmm. McDonald's and Chick Fil A pay pretty much the same mm -hmm. wages. They have the same benefit packages. The whole nine yards. I don't know if you've been in a McDonald's lately. Not lately. McDonald's <laughs> sucks. Always right? has. Yeah. Quality sucks. Yeah. The time it takes to get a cheeseburger is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Chances are there's no consistency from cheeseburger to cheeseburger. 100%. And everybody there is pissed off. Yep. Yeah. Yet you go to Chick-fil-A, it's a completely different environment. The place is full of employees. It's like they don't even have anywhere oh, else well, to stack time employees. Out. I hate this analogy. And TikToks are stupid. McDonald's <laughs> will put a McDonald's <clears throat> everywhere. Everywhere. Okay. Okay. You go into the affluent areas in the McDonald's, there are nice. Now, we they have, have a nice McDonald's, but they can't find any staff. They have eliminated the cashier, and now it's a touch screen. Yeah. It's but they've updated the inside. It looks nice. It's fancy. It's whatever. And down the street, there might be a Chick fil A. But guess what? They pay the same and the same. Yeah. Like they don't say, sure or no problem they say my pleasure or whatever okay who cares i'm saying though the food is just as crappy at both ends like the fries are always the same the burgers are the same it's now if you go into a rougher neighborhood the neighborhood's rough and there's bars on the windows like yeah you're probably not going to have that great of a it, it's still going to be mcdonald's but it's going to be a crappy mcdonald's that's more of a reflection of the neighborhood than the I'm just culture. saying. I'm just saying. Go to a McDonald's they're, they're and a Chick Fil A that are next ran. to each other. They're individually ran. Well, I understand that. I'm just saying. Go find one of these restaurants that's right next to each other. I, the the and if McDonald's put as much MSG as Chick Fil A puts into their chicken, you just hate Chick Fil A into their burgers. It's they, I I didn't say anything about me hating it. That one to the I'm just saying. You put as much MSG as Chick Fil A puts into their chicken. Uh, or it, it, as can much you, MSG. Can you can into you on the burgers, air? Can into you the on burgers. air say that you don't dislike Chick Fil A? That's good. It's okay. No, I didn't ask you that. I said, can you say that you don't dislike Chick Fil A? I don't. don't dislike. Okay. Okay. Chick Fil A. So my kids just ate there the other day. But I'm just saying they're they're little they're little packs God's of MSG. Chicken, David. It is not God's chicken. Let's not get into that. Now I'm just saying <laughs> it is. 
<laughs> they're little packs of MSG, and the MSG is like crack. And so, yeah, the, it's there's a reason why there's a line down because they're handing you here's your MSG. Enjoy. Well, actually, I, I I might I might disagree just a little bit here. So, in in my neck of the woods, we've got uh, we've got both. And uh, on uh, here's the deal. On occasion, I have a six year old daughter. On occasion, we do a daddy daughter breakfast, and she likes to have what she calls a pancake sandwich. Right. And we we can get that from the big yellow M. And uh, we'll swing through and grab that. And it's it's just simply a transaction. But when we go to Chick Fil A, and I pull in the drive through. There's a one, two, three, or four people in the drive-through acknowledging yeah. me, coming to take my order, acknowledging by by name. They'll ask me my name first, yeah. and then help me with the menu. I'm kind of a moron looking at the screen. I don't know. You have chicken here. What do you got? And they'll walk me through it. And I get up front, and they say, "Mr. White or Clint, here you go. Here's your order." Yeah. And and then they say, "You know, my pleasure." Which, to be honest with you, that does make me feel weird when I've got a 16 year old girl saying "pleasure" and my it's just <laughs> weird to me, and I don't like it. But they're about the experience. Yeah. Food aside, right? Whether you like the food or not, MSG or not. Food aside, McDonald's has a touch screen. They have removed the human. Yeah. And there are there are actually facilities to where they have removed all the humans uh, and the food comes out on a conveyor belt after you've done the touch screen. That is actually in beta right now in a c- couple different cities. Oh, I'd be down for that. And I don't even have to talk to anybody. Nobody. That's freaking awesome. It's just a transaction. So I, I believe so this is a personality thing. Yeah, you, you might you might enjoy that. You just yeah. said I love people. I can tell you unequivocally, you hate people. That that is absurd. <laughs> <laughs> you know you're going down. Hey, right? here's, here's the problem. Here's the problem. I just I just want to kind of map this out here. I, I for a living, okay, mm-hmm. sit down and I estimate repairs. Okay, this is what I do. Yeah. All right, I don't really own a shop. Like that's not a job. My job is to sit down and to estimate repairs. I do sometimes a handful. Sometimes I do dozens. But by the end of the month, I have done hundreds. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. I know what things cost. I know what that repair should cost. When somebody comes back to me and says, that's just, that sounds like it's too expensive. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Customer. Do you do this all day long? Do you know what these things cost? Do you know what the going rate is for all this? Do you know what that part should cost? Do you know the amount of human labor that has to go into this particular job? Do you know the intricacies? Do you know the service information I need to have in order for me to do this so you don't come back complaining that it's not done right? Do you know any of this? You don't? So you have no idea what goes into this price that I just gave you. This is a fair exchange for what I'm offering. Let me tell you, it's more than fair. But you somehow think it's not. Now, I could break down the psychology and go, well, let's just talk about this. I haven't transferred enough value to you. BS. You want to pay less. You have no idea. You're talking straight out of your rectum. It's just something you say. Well, just like when they call up the phone and they're like, hey, how much to do? They're just saying that they don't know what else to ask. Okay, fine. Mm-hmm. But when I give you the price and you tell me it's too much, I want to reach through that phone and strangle the life out of you because I cannot believe you just insulted me. Yeah. You just insulted me. Now, oh, you should you should look into Chick Fil A. It's uh, less stress. Yeah, it, if it, I not more stress. Prices are set. It's yeah, really yeah. Easy. prices are, are not set <laughs> if from area to area. One and two. If somebody one, comes up to, to me and says. That's a lot for a chicken sandwich. <laughs> I will jump through that car window and strangle the guy. Wow. You, I, I'm telling you, you sit here and you listen to this and you just, yeah, yeah well, let me tell you, this is a pretty sophisticated job. And we have a three-year, 36,000-mile nationwide war. And I got to go through all that spiel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You do that over and over and over and over and over again you don't longer you no longer you're like you know what i mildly tolerate people only because i can't go live in a cabin i've got a family at this point right but let me tell you if i were 43 years old and single i'd be living in a cabin right now and i wouldn't be sitting here next to you yahoos i'm just saying i would be rid of all of it because it is patently absurd that i have to justify myself to people that don't know what they're talking about is this the end? Is no, no, no. This is just the <laughs> precursor to the middle of the end. Uh, what? I mean, he brings up valid points. What do you think about that? So, what do I think about when people push back on price? 
So, so no, so, no, this isn't pushing no, back. Or, this is this is specifically. This is like me. You sitting down. You're talking about schedule, and I go, "Man, you don't know what you're talking about." Mm-hmm. Okay, well, like, whoa, hold on. Now, it's not like I, I don't know, put this into other shops, have seen it be successful, mm-hmm. have thought through this entire process all the way through, have maybe tweaked it a thousand times over because you know I didn't just start doing this yesterday. Yeah. Now you hear it one time, and you're like, "Oh, okay, let's have a conversation." Hear it a thousand times and not that thousand and first time that you have to sit there and go through the whole spiel, your eyes are going to start twitching. Yeah. It's a thing. Yeah, it's, it's a thing and it takes the right person doing that particular job. They have to be passionate about it. And it, it's I've, I've seen people uh, that have your level of frustration and then some that have been doing this a long time. They're burnout. They're done. And there's other people that do this Is for a lifetime. Is it me a burnout? Is saying I'm burnt out? I, I'm, I'm not just, burnt out. I mean, this, you know, at this point... I'm, I'm not frustrated, dear. No, I'm not. No. I am insulted. Yeah. I'm insulted. They yeah. have he's insulted. Easily insulted. <laughs> he's okay. very easily. Hey, you know, I don't know how he got here. From talking. It's like walking up to Picasso and saying, why are your faces crooked? The faces that you're painted, why are they crooked? But I'm sure they did. Right? Sure. I'm sure somebody said that. Yeah. You know what? And the, probably the first time he heard it and goes, well, you know, it's my choice. Picasso, Picasso didn't by by you was he the one that no that was Van Gogh. Hey, why why are your stars so twirly? There, it's just it looks like swirls. Uh huh. Okay, well that you know um uh, that it's that was my vision. Okay. That, <laughs> that was my vision. I put it on canvas. Some people are going to enjoy it. Some people are not. That thousand and first time somebody comes up and goes, why are they swirly? You know what he did? He chopped his ear off. So what's going to happen is I'm going to chop my ear off. Yeah, it, it, what, what's different about those people? Chick fil A is trash, is what I'm telling you. Popeyes is better. Here's how I know. Here's, this is just I'm just telling you. This is the this is the the the, uh, the you, know, you cannot dispute this. I have never heard of somebody getting shot in a Chick fil A parking lot because they ran out of chicken. That's because of the neighborhoods that they'll put Popeyes in. And I couldn't tell you, I've never eaten any Popeyes. Mm. It's not a neighborhood thing. Oh, yeah. The chicken's just that good. Popeyes is straight ghetto, bro. I've been all over this country, and I can tell you, (laughs) there is no affluent Popeyes. Doesn't happen. (laughs) Deal with it. I will will drive you down. First off, there's a Popeyes right around the street from my house. So you just said I lived in a ghetto. 100%. They just just built. (laughs) That's too many he lived in a good neighborhood because we left equipment in the back of his car. He's like, yeah. I live in a good neighborhood, I hope. <laughs> no, no. If it has a Popeyes, lock your car. In fact, take everything out. The, the door's just, open. They just built a brand new Popeyes. It won't last. It'll get, it'll get bars on the window. It's okay. So the, the I neighborhood's like going down. There's, so the neighborhood's going run is, is getting ran down because we had a Popeyes put in. But here's the real, here's the reality. This is the truth of the matter. All these Californians moved into my neighborhood. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, not shopware. They're lovely people. But everybody else, everybody else, they decided they were going to leave <laughs> their tent cities and move to Kansas City. And then there's a Popeyes. Now I can't leave my equipment in my car. <laughs> it's a sad existence, brother. <laughs> it, is. it really is. It is. Uh, to your point. I didn't see your TikTok because I'm not on TikTok, but I had been on TikTok watching your stupid TikTok about Chick-fil-A. I would have been in that comment section calling you an idiot. You're always in the comment section calling me an idiot. I'm kind of used to that. Uh, interesting. It's not on though, TikTok. It's like Einstein, right? If you know anything about Einstein, yeah. Einstein, they, they knew he was brilliant and, and he was exceptionally famous when mm-hmm. he was alive, but nobody realized truly how smart Einstein was until he was dead, right? And that's just the way life works. Well, Van Gogh, nobody realized how epic his paintings were. What are you talking about? He was famous then. He was, but not to the degree he is now. I'm just saying that he had to justify the swirls and he chopped his ear off. It just drove him mad. I'm guessing. I don't really know the story behind it. Listen, the things that drove you mad (laughs) must have happened long, long, long ago because it's been a long trip, okay? You've been mad for as long as I've known you. I'm and I don't saying, think it has anything to do with Chick-fil-A auto repair. to automotive repair. I'm, what I think I'm, that's, that's just what, me saying my pleasure when they say, thank you, my, my pleasure. Is, 
my point is that they have a different culture and a different environment they within do. the they organization. Do. Yeah. And so people would would rather work for that organization when there's a McDonald's right down the street. One hundred percent. You've got you've got the culture. You have the environment. You have their level of training. Yeah. And again, like all all seriousness, like you know, food aside and MSG aside and all the things. I actually have a very close personal, uh, well, friends of my nineteen year old daughter that worked there chose to work there yeah. because of that culture. And I'll go one step further here. Why don't we just go ahead and pee on the Wheaties, right? Uh, what day are they closed? Sunday. So, doesn't matter, but they're closed because they may have a philosophy company wide that honors a you know honors a religious reason, but they're also honoring their staff. They value their staff to the point where they don't want to overwork them, overburden them, and they want to give them a better uh, experience outside of their work day yeah. by giving them more time. And that same I draw that back into our shops where I've got shops that are open seven days a week, mm -hmm. six days a week. Uh, we're we're going to be uh, split shifts. We're working six a.m. to nine p.m. and you realize what you're doing. You're taking a, a very limited resource that we have, right? Yeah. Our, our, our workforce within our within our uh, industry, and you're destroying them. You're overworking them, and they're going to leave. We're seeing them leave in mass right now, and yeah. I think it's it's important that we take those markers and cues from others outside of our industry. And say we've got to, we've got to honor the we've got to honor the family. We've got yeah. to honor the individual. And we have to make sure that what we do and how we do business not only uh, satisfies the need for the experience for a client, but also satisfies the need for the experience for those that we employ. Yeah. Well, okay, but what's what's the name of that <clears throat> shop? It's the, the that place in Houston. That those shops. Ad, it's Adams Automotive. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they open up a shop across the street from yours. Yeah. And you're talking about honoring and yada yada, and they're all, hey, we're open Monday or seven days a week, seven, seven to seven. Yep. We're going working split shifts. I'm yep. going to pay every single one of your guys another ten dollars an hour flat rate on top of what you're paying sure. them right now. Yep. And all of you, and I'm going to flood your entire market with cheapy oil changes because yep. and free diagnostics, by the way, because that's what they give away. So we're we're going to do that. Yeah. They're going to take 20, 30, 40% of your business. They're going to increase my business. I would be 100% with them moving in across the street from my shop, 100%. They may, it may come back. Yeah, it, it does it come back. It might come back. Yeah. Okay, but you you have to, they come in to your market. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm just telling you, this is, this is like legit experience here. I'm working at a parts store. I had a competitor come across, mm -hmm. like, and they expected... 25 to 40% loss mm -hmm. because there's just one extra choice in town. There's a small town okay. in the middle of nowhere yeah. and you only had so many choices and all of a sudden there's a big retailer that comes into town right across the street from you mm -hmm. and they're like, hey, 25 to 40% of your business is going to be gone. Did you have to fight tooth and nail to try to keep as much business as you could? Absolutely. You sort of relied on them maybe not hiring the best people Maybe not finding, you know, maybe their inventory mix isn't right, and mine is because I've been here for 20 years. You were looking on for anything to try to hang on to the business that you could. Yeah. But did they take 25% of the business? Yeah, retail. Huh. I kept the installer side. But the <laughs> the the retail business, because people are fickle. They're fickle. They, they are definitely fickle, and I think it points back towards uh, – is there is there a weakness in what you do? Is there a weakness in your model? Yeah. I I love trying times. I love like uh, Ed Milet said this morning, the pain. Yeah. I I look forward to the pain. Human nature says we avoid pain at all costs. I don't agree with that. I absolutely don't agree with that. I enjoy when things happen. Like, well, wait a second, somebody else goes across the street. Hold my beer. Come on, let's go. And if I did lose 25% of my business, and that's when I'm going to look introspectively and see how can I do better, not boo who I lost. It's okay. This is yeah. an opportunity for me to grow as a business owner. Did I not offer a culture and an environment that was so ridiculously healthy that 10 bucks an hour doesn't matter? Because yeah. people don't, don't quit bad jobs. They, they quit bad culture. And I can tell you that I can pay you more because we're a high volume shop. But at the end of the day, when you're done being uh, utilized and, and, and your toothpaste roll is empty, they'll move on because you're a number and that's transactionalism. But we as humans, we sniff it uh, out. You, yeah, at the same time, though, there are some people that don't care. That's okay. And you may not know that about your staff. That's okay. You, you may have great people working for you and you didn't know that 
deep down inside that person really just wanted that ten dollars an hour and didn't care that they were going to work yeah. saturday and sunday and they were going to work evening shift and that's just the way it was and they're like yeah but i'm getting 10 bucks more an hour and you're like i've been building this whole thing and we you know you come to the the house for family dinners and we're, we go to mm-hmm. the, the timeshare and we cook out and we have all this we have this the, all this shtick you just wanted 10 bucks more an hour yeah okay okay well you didn't know so now you know now you know that's how it turns out 25 to 30 percent of your customers also didn't care about any of the crap that you were offering of course they wanted the conveyor belt touchscreen experience good and i'm glad that 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 shop is now across the street from me to handle that for me we we've got to get off the the high horse of of uh worshiping at the altar of car count right yeah there, there is more than enough business in this continent to go around. We could double our shops right now and be busy. So yeah. I'm okay and, with. I love competition. And and some of those shops that are doing that, they <clears throat> they tout really massive numbers. But if you really think about, it, if you were going to be open that many hours and you were oh. open that many days, um, hold on now, those numbers don't exactly line up with your labor rate and standard metrics. So I don't know yeah. that those shops are making as much money as they. No, I think they're doing just fine. Yeah, I'm that, sure they're doing just fine. I'm not saying that. I've I'm not personally, saying. I've personally been in. I don't know how far this is going to go, but I've personally been in the originating shop of that model. Mm-hmm. Can I say that without yeah. mentioning any names? Yeah, yeah, sure. I've been in it. Spent three days in that shop, yeah. and I watched that model work. It's a phenomenal model, by the way. Yeah, it's it's. I, I just it blows my mind. The, the challenges is that when you come back to everywhere else, America. I don't have three people to jump on one car every single minute of every single day. Go, 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 go. If I had that staff, I would probably do that model because it does work. It is very profitable. Yeah. And you can do it in a manner that doesn't burn out your team. You can do it in a manner that's healthy and culture is good. Uh, it's right now, it's it's a, it's an anomaly. And you need a tremendous amount of volume. You have to have a for ridiculous that volume. Whereas I'm going to, I'm going to take three cars a day per technician and I'm going to cater to their needs. I'm going to get to know them personally. I'm going to follow up with them personally. I'm going to love on people because it's people that grow my business. And I tell you what, the rest of it, it, I don't need it. It's okay. I don't need every customer. So often, one of the things that I, I have seen and, and heard coaches talk about is that, that we want to give the client what they want. We want to we want to serve them at the level that they mm-hmm. want to be served at. Mm-hmm. We want to provide them the service that they want. Well, part of me says, well, we're professionals, right? Yeah. And and so I, I liken it to the and I've said it before, but I liken it to the the doctor situation. Mm-hmm. Your doctor's not supposed to tell you necessarily what you want to hear. They're going to have to give you some bad news from time to time. Yeah. It's not their job to tell you what you want to hear. It's yeah, not well, their job to provide the perfect experience you want. How how do you liken that to the automotive space? So you got half the equation right. You, you give them what they want. Absolutely. I mean, within the bounds of morality. Yeah. You give them what they want. We should do that in any business anywhere in America. Give them what they want. Sell them what they need. Yeah. Challenge is, and I, this is this is what keeps me busy all week long, is I have, I have a limitless supply of shops in this country where nobody has been taught to properly, ethically, correctly sell. It's, it's not just a script. It, it's a state of mind. You have to find the right person to fill that void. There are people that I are I truly believe were born and created to influence the decisions of others in a correct and ethical manner. They thrive for that challenge. It's it's delayed gratification is what it is. That's what sales is. It's a struggle. It's a fight. I've got to find the parts. I've got to call the customer. I have to make sure that I'm addressing them in a personalized manner and make sure that they understand everything. And I know that this is going to be somewhat of a conflict. It's healthy conflict, right? Yeah. That's okay. But at the end of the day, I thrive in the in the win, and it's it's not about the money. It's 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 about a, about the challenge. It's about the journey, not the destination. You find people like that, and you put the, the, them in the sales seat in your shops. They are the ones that are going to take your shops to the next level. That, but they've got to be one that sounds trained. exhausting. That sounds exhausting, right? And it doesn't sound like two, it's for you. <laughs> it's <clears throat> you're you're right. The problem is finding those people. That also aren't skis bags. Yeah, and absolutely. The the you're talking. Well, we're talking about the tail end of the bell curve now, and so I've got to ignore eighty four percent of everybody that applies to this job, assuming they even meet that qualification. You're talking about, you know, high eye, 
Hi D. Yeah. Okay. They're going to come in with that, those personality traits. Yeah. One. So uh, everybody else, you come in with a high C, high S, you're gone. So I've got this particular personality trait, dominant personality trait. And then I've got to find the ones that aren't skis bags. You're talking about, you know, one or two standard deviations on that bell curve. Man, that's really difficult. And if you Mm -hmm. yourself are not one. Yeah. Yeah. Then you multiply evil. Absolutely. Well, it's not, it's not even that. Well, hold on. (laughs) Hold on. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that you, you yourself might be, I'm saying, I'm saying that you yourself might not be that personality trait. Maybe you're a high C and you don't, you're a high C or maybe a high S or something like that. And you're middle to low D and you, you don't, the, the selling process for you is almost like, here, let me show you, do what you want. Mm -hmm. And that challenge that, Hey, this is that, that I'm going to, cause, cause I understand what you're saying intellectually. I like mentally, I understand Mm -hmm. what you're saying, but I can do it once. And then I'm done. Yeah, and I can't do it more. Yeah, than you would. Okay. You would definitely not be on my list of consideration. Yeah, or yeah. service advisor. That's but and that's I, okay. I have to find somebody like that. Yeah, and, absolutely. And, and you know what? The but majority. You're, ta- you're talking about a tiny sliver of humans. I disagree. And, no, I disagree. Oh, man, because I don't here's know. here's here's the challenge right now. I, I and I and you can correct me if I'm wrong. You are hyper focused. You've got tunnel vision, looking for those people inside of our industry. Because oh, no, no. it is very oh, hard to find no. them in. But yeah. I can tell you what, I have I have a whole troop I call them my soccer moms. I've got I've got moms in their early forties, kids are in high school or beyond. They've not worked in well ever, some of them, and uh, they love people. And they've they've built these skills of communication and handling stress and being able to again solve problems and they thrive in that. They know nothing about cars. And I can take them and put them in their seat and with the proper training and the proper tooling inside your shop, which means you got a DVI that doesn't suck. I can take that individual and make her a rock star service advisor. I have done it many times. I've got a number of them right now currently on my training roles. And they have a level of integrity that makes me look very evil. They are amazing individuals. And so they're not schmucks. They're not skis bags. Every single time I've ever gone down that path, they're great right up until the moment they get questioned Mm -hmm. and then they split off into i don't even know what i'm doing i don't know what i'm doing here i don't know that they questioned me in a or it's a lack of training or they go down the other path of i bet they wouldn't question a man they're gonna question me because i'm a woman and the they were one of those two down to those two paths. And then you're like, okay. Well, I mean, you, you look oh. at Jade, right? Jade is phenomenal. And and I don't need to be on the front counter, right? Mm. I'm terrible on the front. And I think most business owners are terrible on the front counter. They just shouldn't be doing it. Da- I'm, I'm too some, nice. Some David them. gives them the dad voice and yells at him. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it's terrible. We were terrible, terrible yeah. service advisors. And I'm like, I can, I can be proficient, but I, I get emotional about that client experience and want to give them everything they want. And, and you give often, away the farm. Yeah. yeah often cost myself a poop and free tickets to Mystery Hill, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Everything. Well, how'd you know? I, of course, I, uh, I'm feeling a little personally attacked now. <laughs> give everybody give free away. tickets. Do yeah. You? I want yeah, tickets I to Mystery Hill. Come on now. Well, of course you get tickets <laughs> to Mystery Hill, but now I'm kind of feeling like, damn, he knows my. He knows my tricks. <laughs> it's those, marketing, brother. It's all, okay. All those waiters. It's a tchotchke. They're not waiters. I want you head that way. You go. <laughs> it's right Holy there. Holy moly! Yeah. Oh, it's, it I never so thought. Good. I never thought of that. It works so good. Yeah. All so this time I've known you, I never thought of it. Like, hey, while you're waiting, here's go some check tickets it out. to Mystery Hill. Yeah. Go check it out. Yeah. Absolutely. It works very well. You'll be well. out in a couple hours. Yeah. We'll have your car done. Yeah. It's it's brilliant. It works very well, but I don't need to be on the front counter because of it, because I just like, I do, I give away the farm. It's, yeah. it's awful, but I mean, he's right. Look at Jade. Jade is, dude, she is phenomenal on the front counter. She does a really good job. Yeah. I mean, it's next level and she didn't come from, from automotive. I, I yeah. just, some, of, some of my best advisors actually don't come from automotive. Now, I, 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 I consider, and I, I'm, this isn't a horn tooting thing or a patting a back thing. I consider myself what's called a unicorn. I'm an ASC certified master technician. I got 30 years in the industry. I shouldn't be on the counter because I have the curse of knowledge. I'm just going to tell you everything about your car. Yeah. We don't need to diagnose that. Let's just go ahead and put a fuel pump in. I don't know exactly what's wrong. That That's the normal with the really high level educated individual. Uh, but there are people within our industry that can do a great job. But I can, I, I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of advisors now. 
And I can tell you that the ones that succeed, the ones that I think offer the best experience to our clients are the ones that come from either peripheral, so let's say parts industry, or not in our yeah. industry. And and that's when I when I, I coach shop owners, and like you would hire soccer mom, you would hire the driver from, you know, O'Reilly's. Yeah. Absolutely. Look at her personality. Look who's who she questioning is. you on that. I get shop owners a question that. Well, they don't they don't know cars. They can't sell. You don't need to know cars. And that's again, it goes back to a Who lack of communication. Who are you talking to? This, you must. Well, I'm be not like, going to say names. I'm, that would be well, embarrassing. No, they're do. probably <laughs> on Facebook right now, leaving bad comments. Are they on Facebook? I don't think they're on Facebook. <laughs> I don't think they know what social media is. I, you want to know how I know? Like this whole thing is absurd. You need another Jade. Find your one. You know, it, it's funny you bring that up. Okay. Yeah, we just talked about this. Exactly. We just talked it's about not this. that easy. He found a Jade. Great. Now duplicate her. There aren't any. There's only one. There's only one in your area. You got lucky. Congratulations. So he got lucky out of state. too. He's a Clint. Like, yeah, like you, you found someone because you are the way you are. And you're like, oh, I know how to recognize that hey, I just, somebody. I do. Look, I just. I do. I, okay. I, my point is, I'm not that way. I, know. I just got an application. And okay. and so I'm this not going to be able to recognize that in somebody. That's what, are you a shop owner? Are you, are you in charge of hiring? Are you coaching? No, it's okay. You don't I am a to. shop owner. You are a I, shop owner. <laughs> <laughs> this is adorable. Yes, I have employees. Oh my I have a gosh. shop running right now. I have to find somebody Lucas, that can do those things. He needs help. Uh, no shit. Oh my I, gosh. I hate to tell you, I don't no, think no, that no. he... No, no, no. I completely... He needs a type of help we don't offer. He's a okay. very angry man. You should definitely I not be on the counter. <laughs> I completely eliminated the whole thing. I just send him links. <clears throat> Here's your text link. Hey, I, Look at I, your DVI. I have found somebody that that's very much like Jade. They're bilingual. They're really awesome. They're really good with clients. Would have to move from Kansas City, but you know, all I got to do is just convince him to come on in. No, you you would not make it with Juan uh, because the first time he dad voices one of your customers, you'd go, "Yeah, <laughs> what? I miss miss customer? How would did you talk to Juan? What did he say?" <laughs> you you would melt where i enjoy it i listen to it <laughs> yeah got put in this place didn't he? <laughs> he and then two weeks from now he calls me he's like hey it's really slow here <laughs> i have any cars to work on <laughs> well that does happen <laughs> it's all part of the I fun know, and i think the customers would run off you know, I, I do pitch them with the, the hey, I don't have 45 people standing around waiting to jump on every car that comes in the door. No. So you need to drop your car off, ma'am. And they're like, oh, okay. I don't yeah. tell my customers what they need to do. I tell my customers what I have to offer, and I offer only the best. Well, no. I mean, it's in the context of if you want us to touch your car, this is how it's going to go. Mm. Uh, and that's what I tell them. I say it just like that. I was like, I'm sorry. Those giant dealerships that have 45 people standing off front, I, I'm a small shop. We have four employees here and myself. And I don't work here very often. So <laughs> if you'd like us to take a look at your car, then you're going to have to drop it off. And they go, oh, okay. I'll call you back. <laughs> Do they like, call back? Sometimes. I the professor of uh hospitality management for the uh for App State. It was in the other day and we were talking about that. We we're talking about how a lot of the skills that they teach in hospitality management mm -hmm. are just extremely important for what we do. Oh yeah, hundred percent. And and I've seen a lot of people bring in somebody from a hotel front desk oh, or from yeah, a, absolutely like crazy and and have very good luck. I think what made Jade so successful mm -hmm. is because she was used to giving way worse news than what we give, right? So, for instance, you tell somebody they have a she 6, worked a, as a vet. I was just going to say she had office. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. Yeah, it totally makes sense. And, yeah. and look, I I don't I mm -hmm. figured this out. You can tell them that their parent is dying and they care less than they do if you tell them their dog is dying, right? They really love their dogs. Sure. And so like you're talking about giving them a six or seven or ten thousand dollar estimate for a CAT scan or an MRI and all of this stuff. Yeah. And to Jade, it's like, well, six thousand dollars, okay, to fix your car. That yeah. sounds sounds reasonable. Yeah. 
she's, and so she's she, already she's already been pre-trained. She's already been preconditioned yeah. to not sell with her wallet, and she understands that. Yeah, the she value just calls him up and selling. says, "Here it is. No big deal. Easy Here stuff." Yeah. Okay, find your second one. Okay, I will. You're not going to. You've tried. It I, doesn't work out well. It hasn't. Yeah. Well, so let me, let me ask you: When you do find somebody you think is going to fit the bill, do you straight hire them, or do you run them through a third party to interview them and actually to maybe to assess their character, or do you simply make them take the disc analysis and call that good? I don't do any of that. Oh wow! He goes okay. off feeling. I, if I feel good about it, okay. I'm like you're hired, and okay. I throw them in the I throw them into the <laughs> the front desk, and then I leave. <clears throat> oh, okay. And I'm like, probably, like I, I like what you're pitching there. It's yeah. it's it's uh, yeah, again intellectually, mentally, that makes sense. Yeah, go have them go through someone like you <laughs> because you can recognize that in somebody and go, hey, this person's just like me. You will like this. There you go. Um, a service advisor, I guess it would work. If you try to do a technician, that person is uh, gone. It doesn't work. I, I remember when I was uh, coaching with Rick and, and he said that I kept like, you know, throwing my employees to the fire too soon. And I said, okay. And he said, I, I, what I mean by that is, is you're taking your poor employees out to the edge of the dock. Mm-hmm. You're kicking them in the back and saying, hope you can swim as you pull the ladder up off the dock. Mm-hmm. And watch them yeah. float away, right? Like recipe for success. I'm really bad for that <laughs> because, like, that's not what I'm good at. I'm good at doing it, right? I'm really good at mm-hmm. doing the job, yeah. But teaching how to do the job, and 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 I know you're a coach too, but I, I hired Rena to coach. She's a, she's great. Yeah, she's my advisor, and she fits really well with Jay. Yeah, I love her. Yeah, and and so like it's far more effective. Right. So Rena me. Rena also demonstrates that same character quality where yeah. she is very much in tune with the intellect and the emotion of the people that she works with. Yeah. And and that that's I think a requirement to be a coach, consultant, counselor. In fact, I have a, a, a I have a title that I, you know, I sh- I don't share often. I'm not a therapist by the way, but I'm your repairist. You have to be a repairist to do what I do. You have to hear people hear. And when you do that, you use your intuition and you're able to maybe fill the void where a shop owner does not have that skill set, never will have that skill set. Yeah. That's not, that's not your jam, but you find somebody like, like Rena, like Rick White, right? You've got, you've got, we have a, a, a plethora of options in this industry. Yeah. It's, it's who, not how, how am I going to do this? I suck at it. You're not hire somebody yeah. to do it for you who is absolutely vetted and experienced, and, and the odds of success are exponentially higher. I, you know, I talked to Frank Scandura a while back, mm-hmm. and and I was talking to him. We have a mutual friend who's known Frank for many, many, many years, and I was talking to that mutual friend, and he said, you know, Frank used to be real rough around the edges, and and Frank, man, over the past few years has just like mm-hmm. got it nailed down, and he just does what it does, right? I mean, yeah. extremely successful. I was talking to Frank about that, and Frank said, you know why that is, right? I said no. He said, I read Rocket Fuel. And he said it was Great. a it was an eye opener for me. Yep. He said I realized for years I was a visionary trying to do the job of an integrator. integrator. Yep, hundred percent. I realized that I was in here trying to do all these things, and all I was doing was the seagull manager. I was coming in, I was jumping into the shop, yep. I was making a mess of things, and I was saying, "Hey, I want to do this." And yep. then two months later, I'd come back and say, "Why isn't this done yet?" Yep. Yep. But there was no integration to what I was talking about. Yeah, there's no and traction. Yeah, also a good book, by the way. And and so that's what I'm I'm realizing about myself is I'm a visionary, mm-hmm. right? And I look at my, you know, I look at the family business and my both of my my dad and my oldest brother mm-hmm. are visionaries. Yeah. My middle brother's an integrator. I'm a visionary, yeah. right? I'm looking way out here. Mm-hmm. I'm already five steps ahead of the, the business when I'm out there. And so it just makes me think that that we've got so many owners that are in that visionary role. Right, because otherwise you probably wouldn't have started a shop, right? Sure. Oh yeah, you would have just gone very and worked for somebody or something yeah, else, right? Common. But but the visionary says, "I can do this. I can make all this money. I can do all this great stuff." But they don't have the skills to bring all of the little puzzle pieces together and get them lined up and glue them together and keep them there. Yeah, they end up distracted and going fifty thousand different directions. Oh, well, fifty thousand different directions. He just goes one right through the drive-through Chick Fil A. No, it's Popeyes. It is Popeyes. I try not to eat fried chicken. <laughs> that so. fried chicken. Hey, dude, we went to a restaurant last night. Yeah. Yeah, where'd you go? Uh, Story. Have Story in Prairie Village. Yeah. yeah. Pretty it, good. Oh, man. It was beyond pretty good. It was, it was, you should Wednesday check it night, out. Friday, ch- uh, fried chicken, Wednesday yeah. nights. It's yeah. Legit. I'm, I'm down with some fried chicken. 
Absolutely. It was good. It was. It was very good. Good choice. I hear tonight is going to be a good choice, too. Yeah. What, when we have a happy hour tonight. What are you talking about? Yeah, we do have the happy hour tonight. Is there's there's, a, there's a change hour? in the industry podcast. Yeah, I've seen the the the, the questions. Is, is, where is it? It's uh, in the convention center downstairs. Convention downstairs. center downstairs. Okay, yeah. perfect. All right. So you're not going to show up. Yeah. I'm going to be there. Yeah. Me and my glowing personality, I'll be there shaking hands. Yeah. Trying to connect both mentally and emotionally with and listening to people. And, and, and I'll, I'll walk around and introduce you. This is my friend, David. He's a shop owner. <laughs> yes, that would be awesome. Can you make sure you tell people that he loves bear hugs? <laughs> Touchy feely. Are you now? No, I don't yeah. like to be touched. Oh my gosh. He, um, <laughs> a while back we were, I think it was, we were at ASTE, right? I want to learn how to like people. No, no, I don't want to <laughs> like people. I want to know what is wrong with you. Me? <laughs> wow. That's pretty in depth. That, that's a, that's deep, a personal that's a, question. That's a deep accusation. I, no, you admitted it yourself. You're like, oh, I love people. I, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so have why, you why am I broken? enough people? I don't think you've met enough people. <laughs> well, I, I meet people for a living. And I, like I know people. that's, I do, um, do you only get to know them in a very like like superficial way? No, no. I, I deal with people at a very in depth level. Uh, I have a tendency to make people mad. Uh, I, I I can definitely piss off my fair share of a crowd. You should have seen the class this morning. Nobody walked out, but I got them riled up. Absolutely, I've taken that class. I've been in that class. Yeah, yeah I, I I love it's a good class. I love people because I truly believe in this. And this maybe this is you know a little higher level. I love people because I truly believe that's why I'm here. When you have a when you have a purpose in life, when you truly understand your your call, your reason, why was I placed here on this earth in the position that I'm in? I, I believe it's for others, and I have uh, I have a what I th- believe is a servant's heart. I want to serve others. I want to. You know, why am I here right now? Well, a it's fun. I love doing this, but I'm I'm here because I know that this this is going to go forth and go forward. And although we're goofing around and being silly, at the end of the day, there's there's meat on the bone. Yeah. And I know that somebody's going to hear that and go, oh my gosh, I, I should do that. I didn't know that was an option. Yeah. I want I want to to be the catalyst for change in this industry and and even beyond. There's there's other ventures that I have in life where I I I reach out to those that that need help. I, I don't I don't give handouts. I want to give yeah. a hand up. I love people. I truly yeah. do. The, the the change in the industry um, will come as soon as the people that aren't trying go away. Mm-hmm. And we have fewer people buying into that, the whole like Adam shtick. Because it's not just, it's not, I'm not trying to pick on Adam's automotive. They're, they do what they do fine. Mm-hmm. But there's like, there's like 10 of them. You see what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that, that is not models. a new model by any no, means. No, no, not, not, not not, their shtick is a little, it's a little different. It's a different flavor. But that whole, like, we're going to generate these huge numbers because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the, the revenue coming in the door. That that mentality, that mm-hmm. mindset yeah. uh, is, is very pervasive amongst a certain group of coaching companies mm-hmm. and consultants and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, so that that's that needs to be starved out, right? Mm-hmm. And then the people that don't give a crap or that aren't trying need to go away. They need to retire. I'll tell because you one, one of the things I sell. I tell this to every single shop that re- that reaches out to me. They either please work with me, please work with my advisors, work with my technicians, work with my team. And I say I want to clear up one thing before moving any further. I am not here to make you any more money. I say those words as a coach. Like, wow, you're still in business. That's fantastic. What's wrong with you? I am not here to make anybody any more money. And then I say, open your work in progress. Okay. What's the last car that was checked in? Uh, Nancy Phillips. Okay. What's up with Nancy's car? Uh, it's misfire. It's got a check engine light. Okay. Nancy been in before? Yeah, she's been in a couple times. What do you know about Nancy? I don't know. Do you know Nancy's situation? Do you know her life? Do you know her needs? Do you understand her, her desire length of ownership? Do you, do you know anything about her at all? Yeah. Well, no, I mean, not really. Well, I tell you what. My purpose here, you choose to hire me, is for Nancy. Because I want Nancy's car to run for as long as she wants it to run, be as comfortable and safe and reliable. I want Nancy to have an amazing experience at your shop. I want Nancy to be one of your raving fans. 
I'm here Isn't for Nancy. Exhausting though. No, it's not exhausting. <laughs> it's got to be. No, it's it not. sounds exhausting. And, and, and I tell you, the trickle the trickle it, down just... effect is if you do that and you do that with the correct heart, the correct mindset, and the correct structure and process, the trickle down effect is: Will you make more money? Yep. Sorry, you're going to have more money. But I'm not here to make you more money. It, it reminds me very much of my dad, right? Like what he's talking about. You got to take care of people. Yeah, I mean that that's how my dad has always operated. <clears throat> okay, and he, but your dad's a people person you're a people person you are energized by the idea of doing what he just said yes. that sounds exhausting and just like you i know, think you're you what, know who what? i want to be you know who i want to be yeah who you've seen seinfeld right absolutely soup Kramer. nazi okay. oh so soup nazi heck yeah what did he have <laughs> the best soup in the whole wide world right he had a line out the door yeah. you know what he didn't have to do any of that nonsense yeah. i have the best soup do you want the soup no and get the hell out you know what? You don't get the soup because you didn't do the exactly how I want. You annoyed me. Go away. No soup for you. Gone. You and Dutch are so much alike. It's not wow. even funny. Dutch? Sil- Silverstein yeah. syndrome. Is that what that is? Yeah. Called? That's yeah. that's exactly what that is. <laughs> is that they how he well did it? Twins. <laughs> so in the, in the, and so he scratched and clawed. You know what he? <clears throat> you know what he doesn't do? Irrationally buy random old video games. <laughs> Wait, because he what? doesn't know how to play them. <laughs> He, he can barely he, turn on his computer. Is is the is? Do you know how many times a week he calls me to ask me how to get his TV remote to work? His discipline with money is the only thing that I think I'm lacking. Because if he, <laughs> if, if, if I, I think if 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 uh, if that's how he was able to to build the business that he has, in which it was like, hey, I'm doing it like this. You either like it or you don't. And if you don't, there's a door. And he was able to stay in business. Then there's hope for me. You know, I I don't know if if y'all have seen. Did you see the newest uh, uh, article in Ratchet and Richie? You've wrote, shared it enough times that now it's annoyed out, me, yeah, and I haven't looked at it. Came out this morning. No, I've, and so I've, I asked I've Chris been, Jones. I'll be predisposed today. <laughs> yeah, I, I asked Chris Jones as I was walking with him through the convention center. And I was like, "Hey, man, did you bring your level three body armor because you might get shot." <laughs> like, hey, you want to be careful. <laughs> Dutch was pretty spicy. I, I thought was he spicy? Yeah, I thought that was pretty oh, impressive. He just called it. out like, I don't know, half of the auto repair shops in the country. That's all. Wow. Yeah, he was. Uh, and and many of those How? other business practices we spoke about. Yeah, he he, he uh he uh poured gas on it, took a match, lit it, and threw it on the fire. Uh, so well, I mean, he doesn't like it when I say that there's no technician shortage. There's an overabundance of trash shops. He gets very upset on it. <laughs> I, he, you know, he gets mad at me over a lot of things. I just typically <laughs> smile and nod. Smile and wave, boys. Wow. That's right. Smile, smile and wave. wave. I don't know, Clint. You're very nice, but I'm um, just telling you, you're exhausting. Just you're too um, people person-y. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I can't do it. I can't do it. I want to. Okay. For the sake of the customer, I want them to feel good about the experience. But if in feeling good, I have to... Expel, ex, expend mm-hmm. all of my um, social bandwidth in that by the time I get home, mm-hmm. I've got nothing left for my kids and family. Okay. I'm done. I'm out. So let me ask you, what do you know about uh, embalming? Nothing. No? Nothing? No. I I would truly recommend a, maybe a, a shift into being a mortician. I cannot ask them for the money. <laughs> no, you wouldn't no, have to. No, I tried. No, no, the front counter takes care of that. No, all you need to do no, is not, just, dude, we're back you just to have to work one. on dead bodies. Like I have to. I think that's the perfect career right no, there. No, no, I have to then, I've got to find somebody that can make them feel good. No, 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 no. Be that they just, they bring them in, back. they're dead, they're cold, you do the thing, they don't like it, they never yeah, that, say that's anything. That's not the same part. That's yeah. not the same part. No, 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 okay. mortician. The, Not, the mortician slash embalmer. Yeah. The right? guy in the back room. But I'm still, the, the problem is I <laughs> just push the body um, into the furnace. <laughs> push the body into the furnace. That should, that should release yes! stress for you. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it was alive or not. That's not the problem. It's not the point of this. They won't complain for long. It's fine. I feel bad for people. I do. I feel like I feel pity on on folks. And I do want to help that them. That is out. the answer right there. He feels pity, pity on them. Gosh, you're such you're an ingrate. Idiot. You're just a stupid <laughs> fool, aren't you? No, I, I don't like so ingrates. Bad for you. I don't feel bad for ingrates. Ingrates can they can kick off. I don't care. The, but I, I this this is why you end up giving away a lot of repairs because you like you feel bad for for the single mom. No, no. 
The, you feel bad for the guy. <laughs> I thought we were going somewhere no, completely no. different okay. there. Oh, no. <laughs> so the, the grandmas, you feel bad for grandmas. The grandmas that come in and they're like, I'm so old that I'm living on a fixed income. You're like, okay. And, and they've, t- and, and they've genuinely taken care of their vehicle. I've tried. And, and all of a sudden you're like, oh, hey, just do the brake job. I'm like, what well, did not pay for it? Hey, when my technician saw me that. Because they're really telling me, like, hey, you're just losing money, right? I feel like you're not going to be able to pay me this week. And then I'm like, just shut up and do the break job. And then at the end of the week, David's like, hey, guys, y'all are going to have to get some work out because I can't pay you. (laughs) That's been a long time since that's that's happened. That's been a long time. But but I feel bad for for people. But at the same time, like, I, I don't. I don't care about your story or I don't care. Like, yeah, that's not. Yeah, that that definitely uh, definitely rules you out for any sort of customer service. <laughs> hey, you know how long I've been doing customer service. I would not hire you. He, <laughs> you know, but but he brings up a valid point, right? <laughs> and and that valid point is is that it can be exhausting. It is. It can. It. You know. I you know. We energized sit here. by it. What are you talking I, about? I am. I am. But, and you know, Justin Allen is probably one of the first people that's picked up on it. Mm-hmm. Like we go out and we do these recordings and we go to these events and we do the panels and we do all this stuff. And I can, man, I'm energized by it and I love it. But at the end of the day, when I turn off, I'm, I'm like, I'll go and find a, uh, go to the bar and sit off by myself and have a drink and, and oh, like yeah. decompress. You know what I'm saying? No, Lucas, I do this all day. I talk to people all day long yeah. for a living and then I'm done and you know, Lord bless my wife and kids, right? So I need I need just a moment. Mama needs 20 minutes, right? Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> talk to people for a season after I'm done with my day. That's normal. That's actually going to be that, uh, that dopamine release that I'm sure hoping to get after I have been at a high for too long. Yeah. There's many different uh, professions that experience that. That's that's n- that doesn't indicate that you have an issue with people. Yeah, it says that you pour yourself out from very deep within, and you're passionate about what you do. Yeah, well, and and you know that's a valid point because I I go out and and you know a lot of times like when I pull in the driveway at the house, I'll just sit in the car and and just sit there for a few minutes and just think. Yeah. and and you know I typically go home for lunch, and so little dude's five and he's. Yeah, wide open right now. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so sometimes Alex will get a little frustrated with me because I'll say, hey, I'm going to come home for lunch and then I don't come home for lunch. And it wasn't that I don't want to see my family. It's that, you know, if it's been a stressful day or a hard day, mm-hmm. I need a few minutes with just quiet and yeah. allow me to process my thoughts and get through those thoughts. When when you're around people and you do, like, I enjoy being around people and, and helping people and, and that's a thing for me, right? I also recognize that that I've poured so much into that Mm -hmm. that I've not had enough time to process my thoughts and think through it. I'm only thinking about the other person. Yeah. So if I don't stop and take a deep breath, right, I will find myself exhausted. Four days of this. It manifests into back pain. Let me tell you, you're just trying to shave and all you straighten and all of a sudden you sit down on the toilet and you try to get back up. And that's the thing. That's what happens when you do that. I, that's the most obscure and random experience I think I've ever heard. Uh, he knows I can't stand up straight first thing in the morning. Why are you shaving at the toilet? That's really weird, brother. No, it's oh, not. You know, not when I, you have a I bidet. Can... You can just like scoot back <laughs> yeah. and wash so your face. Do and... you rinse the razor in the bidet? I just, yeah. Man, I yes. I got the same haircut you do, brother. Sha- 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 Shaving is part of my day. I get that. Are you, are you familiar with the uh, free bird? The free bird? Yeah. Uh, does it involve a mullet? No, no. So it's not. a it's a little handheld. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. It's got like yeah. The, the the palm thing. It's yeah. been life. Yeah. It's been life changing. It for is this. a free bird. Yeah, it's got the little eagle on it. Yeah, I've got one of those. It's yeah. been life changing for this podcast. It really has. It, I yeah. wish they would sponsor the show. It's been phenomenal for the show. Yeah. People no longer think my my host over here is uh, an AIDS patient. Uh, he's not coming in with big scars and blood all <laughs> no, over his I head. Got, I got oh, an AIDS patient. I use I use the razor razor. He's like it's over meth. Here. It's meth, guys. And <laughs> it's meth. <laughs> it's just meth. That explains so much. <laughs> the that anger, is- the frustration, the highs, the lows, and the scabs. Yes, yeah. the scabs. <laughs> <laughs> this is probably our best episode ever. <laughs> Just want to point that out. You think so? This is a pretty cool cat right here. What's that? He rolls with the punches. You know why? He's a people person. He knows how to roll with the punches. What about you, David? What What's about that? you? He just punches. Yeah. <laughs> He's a hitter. <laughs> 
His wife is a redhead. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so, back to your point. Okay. You can sit on the toilet and then you can sit there and be like, do you knock out two birds with one stone? That's fantastic. Utilize your time a little bit more. I'm very deliberate about my mornings. I, okay. want, to, I want them in a okay. certain like. The free bird actually I think works better than the shower, to be honest with you. I haven't tried. I'm a little freaked out trying it in the wet. Uh, the, the shower. Yeah. No. I've been using one for about a year. And really? It, uh, oh, yeah. It's, just blast through it. No problem. Through it, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it works good. And then you can pop the blades open and give it the rinse in the shower head. Put it back. That's up. probably. If you don't pop <clears throat> the blades open, by the way. It gets really gross. Yeah, don't do that. Well, it gets gross. And then one day you're like, and it goes, eh, and it just starts flashing at you. <laughs> you're like, like, I just charged you. What's wrong with you? Yeah, yeah. it can't be that. Just full of dead skin. And yeah, it's just hair. full of dead hair. <laughs> dead skin and, and old hair. <laughs> Glad I don't have that problem yet. I'm closer. I'm closer, but I don't have that. You're problem not losing yet. your hair. Is that a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Is your Are dad you really? Uh, no, it, 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 he's thin. He's got hair back to like gray right here. What about grandpa? You getting a little cul de sac back here at the backside? No, no, oh, it's okay. all up front. Oh, it's okay. All my, it's, it, you know, and there's pictures of it. There's pictures showing exactly what happens. I get stressed. Yeah. And I'm like, mm, right. So, well, I mean, if you look at your haircut, I mean, you know, it's been, I don't know, 25 years since I've combed my hair, but I'm looking at his and like he's pulling it back and pulling it back. Yeah. No wonder it keeps going backwards. Maybe it, you should pull it forward. And is do it the, going backwards? It's yeah, yeah, a full it hawk. It is. And look, the, the only fear I have about that is I'm going to have these like giant holes in my head. All right. Holes? Yeah. Those are holes. Holes from what? A window. Yeah. I was four years old. Went right through one? Oh, yeah. Yeah. 250 Honda. Okay. Yeah. I've got scars from a Honda, too, but it's because the hood struts gave up. Wham! Oh, oh man. It just... That hurts. <laughs> man, does that hurt. <laughs> hey, you know what? The worst injury I've ever had working on a car, and I've, I've had some, like, nasty injuries. I fell off of a fender one time and smashed my kneecap into it and, like, dented okay. the fender and bones yeah. crunched and cracked. Doesn't bother me. Hurt my back working on a car. That doesn't bother me. I am... Um, I slid off of a hood one time. I was like up on a on the mm-hmm. hood in the the safety latch that points up, and it's that little V shape. I think it was a Dodge pickup. Mm. And I I started to slide backwards, and I thought my knees were going to hit the bumper, and they missed the bumper. And so when they did, they caught the boys on that U shaped hook. Oh, and pretty oh, much oh, ripped oh, my britches oh, and hung oh, me oh on my that. God. <laughs> Boys, I'm going to tell you oh. what, that was pain, man. Oh, my god! Because it wasn't just like they caught, <laughs> right? The old yam sack. Oh. Dude, well, oh, it, was like, it was like they rolled, right? It was like they <laughs> rolled. They rolled, and then they caught, and then that stopped me, right? That's what stopped me. And that that is a that is a. I've never call. known them to be doubled as a fall restraint, but hey. Uh, it stopped me. It stopped me. <laughs> okay. That was a good episode. That was awesome.